In the form of calculating radiative energy from one surface to another, there is a term called view factor, which is pretty new to us. Here, let's spend some time to learn what are view factors. View factor is defined as the portion of the radiative heat flux which leaves one surface that strikes another surface. In fact, you can consider it as a very straightforward concept. Just think of it as a factor to measure how well one surface can see another surface. It is worth pointing out that view factor is purely based on geometry. It's not related to any physical surface property or temperature. So why does view factor appear in the equation for radiative heat flux and why it is important? This is because thermal radiation depends on the orientation between the surfaces. For example, if there's a nice fireplace in a living room, the radiated heat from the fireplace to the different walls is not uniform because of different orientations and distances. Also, for the furniture, you can imagine that for different surfaces, the amount of radiation heat to them are not the same. View factor that accounts for the effect of orientation between surfaces for radiation heat transfer. It's a scalar value varied between 0 and 1. When one surface can see another surface, the view factor will be larger than 0. For example here, imagine that you're on the same plane of surface I. There's nothing obstructing your view of surface J, which is marked as yellow. In this case, view factor Fij will be larger than zero. However, you will not be able to see any part of the opposite side of the yellow surface, indicated here in blue. So the view factor from the red surface to this blue surface is zero. In such cases, view factors can be readily verified by visual inspection. We were plotting two separate surfaces and discussed the view factor between them. In fact, the pair of surfaces participating in radiation don't have to belong to two independent parts. There could be two small portions of one larger surface. In another word, for one surface, we can find the view factor from the surface to itself. For a plane or a convex surface, imagine if we're lying on the surface, viewing outwards, we'll not be able to see any other parts of the surface. For such cases, we say that the view factor Fii for the surface is zero. Note that we're using double i in the subscript to indicate the self-viewing circumstance. However, for a concave surface, if we're looking out from any position on the surface, we can see other parts of the same surface, so the view factor is not zero. For the surface we're showing here, our sight of view extends beyond the surface, meaning that this concave surface is not the only thing we can see. So the view factor will not exactly equal to 1. It will be a value between 0 and 1 that can be found by calculation instead of merely by visual inspection. To calculate view factor mathematically, we need to know the areas, distance between the two surfaces and the angles between the surface normals. Consider two infinitesimal surfaces I and J with differential areas DAI and DAJ. The distance between the two infinitesimal surfaces is S, and the angles between the surface normals are theta I and theta J, respectively. The view factor from infinitesimal surface I to J can be calculated by this definition. It's worth mentioning that for simulation of radiation heat transfer problems, the finite element solver will calculate the differential view factor for each matched surface for the problem. We've been talking about view factor Fij, that is, from surface I, we're looking at surface J. But how about the other way around? What is the view factor from surface J to surface I? Will Fji equal to Fij? To find that out, let's integrate the differential view factor over surface I. With some algebra, you will find that the product of Fij and area I is equal to the product of Fji and area J. We call this reciprocity rule. It indicates that, in general, Fij is not equal to Fji unless the area of the two surfaces are the same. In your life in engineering, we often encounter cases where radiation occurs within a perfect or fully closed enclosure. 
The fireplace in a room could be an example if we close the doors and window and ignore any small gaps. For perfect enclosure, the conservation of energy principle requires that the radiation leaving any surface of an enclosure must eventually be absorbed by the other surface of the enclosure. This means no radiative heat is escaping. Therefore, the sum of the view factors from surface I of an enclosure to all surfaces, including the self, must equal unity. We call this the summation rule. Perfect enclosure is not a must for radiation though. It's also normal that radiative energy is lost to the ambient environment. For example, the radiative energy from the campfire to the people around it. In such cases, the sum of view factor is expected to not be unity as some radiated heat is lost to the surrounding environment. Now, let's try to find view factors for some simple geometries. Here, we have a hollow sphere geometry. We call the inner surface of it, surface 2. Inside the hollow sphere, there is another smaller sphere. We call the outer surface of it, surface 1. Now we want to find view factors between surface 1 and surface 2. Let's first decide what surface 1 can see. Surface 1 is a convex surface. As we mentioned before, a convex surface cannot see itself. So F11 is 0. So what can surface 1 see then? It surely can see surface 2. And by inspection, we can say that surface 1 can fully and only see surface 2. This means that F12 is equal to 1. Since it's a perfect enclosure, we can verify the summation rule here. The view factors from surface 1 indeed adds up to unity. We found view factors from surface 1, but how about view factors from surface 2, which are F21 and F22? By inspection, we know that surface 2 is a concave surface. Know that it not only can see itself, but also can see surface 1. So F21 will be a value between 0 and 1. This is where the reciprocity rule comes in handy. We can find F21 by the ratio between the areas of the two surfaces. And with F21 obtained, we can use summation rule to find F22. You can try such an inspection method for some other simple geometries too. However, in general, calculating view factor is not an easy task except for the simplest of geometries. For arbitrary or complex geometries that we see in engineering, we need to rely on numerical methods to find new factors. By the finite element method, an arbitrary geometry is discretized to a number of elements. For each element phase involved in radiation, view factors are calculated. So if there are 1,000 element surfaces involved in radiation, the view factor matrix will be a thousand by a thousand. Thus, computer simulation is ideal for such complex calculations. The finite element solver will then use this view factor matrix to calculate the incident radiative flags from one phase to other phases.